Hey, today I'm going to go over some basics of using the pen tool to trace over photos. Basically you're taking a raster pixel based photo and using pen tool and maybe some shape tools to trace over it. And you do this instead of using live trace in some instances because live trace can often produce too many anchor points and paths and if you want something that's more customizable um, something that doesn't have too many anchor points um, and you can really create a look that you want to um, that's more customizable and more of what you're looking for um, then you may want to just manually uh, create it with a pen tool it's, it takes a lot more time than live trace but oftentimes it's worth it here's one example I have here this is a um, one I have actually up on iStockphoto.com and I'll just zoom in to show you um, this would be kind of relatively easy to create once you got used to the pen tool you would uh, click some straight lines here and um, you'd have to zoom in here and actually do more of the detail which isn't too easy um, in here so like this is one object this is an object this is an object so um, these lamp posts that transformer the one across the street light across the street so I basically took a photo I had taken of a street and focused on the street lights and a sign and did that um, here's a related one so was, this is kind of an example that you could trace over okay if you place that okay another one um, I have a tutorial up on the site photoshop tutorials and tips.com um, of using public domain uh, photos and drawings um, and using that to live trace. This is from Alice in Wonderland that's it's so old that it's in the public domain and this is just the result of what I came up with um, and of course once you trace it you can still edit it and adjust the settings and all that as far as uh, using the direct selection tool grabbing the anchor and uh, pass and you know adjusting the edges of it and whatnot if you needed to but that's a pretty simple one it's just one color okay our example will do a couple more than that um, so go ahead and if you want to follow along go ahead and this will be pretty short uh, just an intro to it go ahead and go to Adobe Illustrator go to file new hit OK and then go to file place and what I'm gonna do is choose this duck one um, uncheck the link so it actually embeds into the file. So this is a photo of some ducks at a lake and I'm going to click and drag the corner and hold shift to maintain the correct proportion and um, so you have it here and what you want to do is click click the pen tool and first you want a specific color. You're not going to have every single color in here because you're just going to have a certain gradient of colors in there. So if you double click on that and you can choose a color manually like that or you can choose the eyedropper tool and actually select a pixel so if you see where I'm clicking it actually grabs that color so I'm going to click that uh, black there and then the pen tool and what I'll do is how the pen tool works if you click and let go and then click and let go at the other end of a curve and kind of pull it out like that now if I click here it's going to actually keep curving over like that so to reset this curve go ahead and click again on this most recently clicked anchor and that will reset the angle so now you can click like that again and click like that again I want to reset it and this is going to be kind of pretty basic and it won't be exactly and you can always um, adjust the opacity of this or move it over and to see underneath you can also use layers if you go to window and then layers and you can put a bunch of your different uh, shades on different layers so you can put all the blacks on one layer um, all the dark blues on one layer all the greens on one layer so it'd be a little bit more manageable so once you have that um, you can start another one but first I want to say um, I'm just gonna click off here so nothing's selected and click the eyedropper tool and I'm just gonna get this beak color here maybe that and then again go back to the pen tool 
and oops, I didn't want to select that one. You don't want it to combine with a, a, a previous one, so um, do something like that. I'm just gonna do this really quick, so you get the idea right there. Okay, then you'd want to put on top the eye, so like this has the eye right there. You could actually instead of using the pen tool, you could use a um, you know, circle or a ellipse tool, but I'm just gonna click and drag and do it in there, but I'm gonna make it, instead of that dark, I'm gonna change it a little bit and make it, uh, maybe even make it white. Okay, uh, and then bring this back over. And so you kinda have kind of a basic idea here what I'm talking about. And then you would go over those other ones as well. It'd be up to you what to uh, include. If you have this on its own layer, the reason you might want to do that is if you go to Window Layers and you could click the eye icon next to it, see how they're all in the same layer now. So it's kind of, you kind of do that. But if you hit New Layer and if you take the paths and move them onto that new layer, and then I just have the image on layer one. So I can click this eye icon and it removes the opacity of it. I mean, removes the you know, see uh, the visibility of it. So if you keep um, different maybe objects or hues on separate layers, it becomes a lot more manageable when you're tracing. Um, so if I do another example, let me show you real quick. You go File Place and say my friend Kelly here. Okay. Again, I'm going to go ahead and just do on the layer two, and I'll just do white and just kind of like this curve here for the. If you don't get it right right away, you can click the white arrow and click the edge there. And adjust it. You can click the um, adjust the edges as well as the anchor points where they are and whatnot. Um, so it's not set. You can um, you know keep experimenting with it. You probably add a little bottom to that as well. And then um, as far as the face, you can zoom in by pressing Control Plus or Command Plus on the Mac. And again, you can. I'll do a new layer uh, here and. Let's say, uh, I'll just grab a color here from her lips and click and click and let go and drag, click and drag, and then remember to click that to reset the angle, otherwise it's going to keep going along there. Okay. So there would be the lips, and then you put something on top of that. So you have multi-layers. You can have um, you know, one for the, the white of the eyes, and then you can have the people on top and so forth and you could put um, the hair on top as well so it's a um, it, it's a tedious process but um, it often the end result looks a lot better than just live tracing it um, it's a lot more customizable okay thank you